Welcome to Shoving Hot Sauce Up Your Butt. I'm your host, Michael Riley. With me is Dane Forgione. Hi. Jason Amherst. Volcanic Ass Explosion. And Billy Carter. My name is Mealy Pitchell, and I sodomize myself with, with hot sauce bottles all day long. <laughs> well, we're getting sued. <laughs> No, you know he said yeah, he said Millie Mitchell. No, That's a different person. Yeah. Well, yeah, Millie Mitchell's gonna come sue. <laughs> you know, speaking He's of not smart enough to watch this show. Speaking of hot Ouch. sours. Speaking of hot sours. Theta East. The um, what is that um, YouTube or internet show where the people try the hot sauce and they do an interview while they're uh, hot ones. That's hot wings, yeah. not hot sauce, but yeah. Whoa, hold up. Whoa, wait a minute. Jace, you never told us that your your uh, your friend Congo had his own game. Oh, this is uh, this is the, uh, uh, I, I guess you could say the third game in the Joe and Mac trilogy, technically. All right. I see. Anyways, yeah, no, you like, could say that if you have, guy. you could say that, yeah, if you had a head wound. So in the hot one. Well, it's, it's, it's part of the, uh, the Dragon Ball franchise no. somehow. So in the hot ones, first they had Donald Duck as a guest. And now they have Peter Griffin coming on as a guest. They, they also did a uh, brief little video with Venom, too. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. They're, they're getting that Disney money. Didn't I guess so. They're getting that Denny money. Yeah, no. Uh, Ven- Venom splashes a gallon of milk all over himself while screaming. <laughs> they also got a uh, oh, deal yeah. with uh, with Panda Express right now. I didn't know. Since when is Venom Spanish? I mean. Uh, I just thought it was hilarious. He's he's, he's like freaking out over it. (laughs) Well, I mean, he went to Mexico, so he would pick up some Spanish down there. All right, fair enough. Okay, anybody says I like those movies. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the third one. Listen, if it's even a tenth better than Joker, blah, 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 blah. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. It'll be a that'll be a victory. That movie sucked so bad. I I know. Joker pretentious subtitle. <laughs> that movie yeah. sucked so bad it made my dad come home with milk and cigarettes. From wow. the dead? Yeah. He said wow. brain, son. Brain. I brought milk son. and cigarettes. And brains. I told. I told that's you great. I did that. That's great. You didn't have any of those things before. <laughs> Not even the love. Also, I want to ask a question, a serious question, one I might intend to deal with. Why the fuck is Porygon up there? He kind of does look like Porygon. You know what? You know what? You know what, Mike? Since since you asked that question so nastily, I'm not telling you. I know the exact answer, but I asked the question nastily. What are you talking about? I ain't no nasty boys. You were like, go ahead. You was like, what? What the fuck's Porygon doing up there? You could have asked that a nicer way. And now you're beating up Yoshi. What's going on here? Butch did it. Next. Speaking of Pokemon, uh, my parents. One of their hobbies is dumpster diving. And today, they came home, and they're like, here, this bag is for you. I'm like, what is it? It's full of Pokemon cards and Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Just chock full and that they just threw away in the dumpster. Still in the packaging. I want to do a boxes. game that's a combination of Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, Pokemon, and Dragon Ball. I'm going to call it Poke Ball. Goodbye. I'm leaving. I'm leaving this call. That's you what go, Dave's going to say. You go balls. 
You poke I didn't ball. say it. Well, you know, I didn't say anything. I was just nodding along to your joke. So, so you, you just assumed that I was going to leave? Uh, you poke balls. That's good. You, you do you... that every time I make a bad joke. No, no. You misunderstand. That's every time Ashley makes a joke. You oh. poke dragon. I poke dragon balls, yeah. I poke balls. I poke my own balls. I'm doing it right now. Uh, Poking my balls. Uh, yeah. Poking uh, it with my index no. finger. Right on my sack. Nice <laughs> and hairy and wrinkly. Oh, yeah. So the what? Japanese title for this uh, game is Tatakai Genshijin 2 Ruki no Boken. Caveman Combat 2 The Adventures of Rookie. Ah. So. Rookie, uh, Rookie, Well, Tatakai Genshijin is the Japanese subtitle for Joe and Mac. Um, ah, so this is a Joe and Mac game, technically. Technically, yeah. This is the sequel to Joe and Mac. I like those games. Those games are fun. So, uh, in Japan, it was known as Joe and Mac Caveman Combat. Joe and there Mac is... Tatakai Genshijin. Now, there's the NES version. I think it's called Caveman Ninja or Caveman Combat. Uh, that, that's that's what they uh, translated it to in uh, for uh, mm. arcades, Caveman Ninja. Caveman yeah. Ninja. I actually like the Joe Matt games. They're they're, they're they're pretty good. Yeah, I've uh, I've got. Uh, well, one, they're both on uh, Switch Online, but then they uh, also remade the arcade game recently, too. That is true. Now, they are difficult. <laughs> they are difficult games as it go as they go on. But, uh... Yeah. They are fun. They are really, fun. Really, what a weird-ass ending, though. Like, Yeah! I did not expect oh, to be fighting the devil. No, Jace. I uh, I was on 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 eBay and I found a seventy inch foam uh, Sun Wukong staff. Huh. Yeah, that's funny. I I bought it. It was twenty one dollars. That's that got the, it doesn't have the best paint job on it, which I could fix that. Um, but for cosplay purposes, um, yeah, yeah, it's gonna work. It's gonna work real well. You now have a like giant power pole. That is true. I actually have another one that. You press a button and and and, and uh, it extends. It it it's spring loaded and it goes. Shee! Um, and it's not one of those. It's not one of those ones that shrink down into like the tiny little pellet and then it does that. No, this one has some heft to it. You can actually well, twirl this around and it's not going to fall apart on you. I'm I'm laughing at the uh, review of Sonic Shadow Generations. Sonic's story is basically a cartoon episode, while Shadow's story is a whole Dragon Ball Z arc. It's true. Mm. <laughs> also, uh, the the new uh, Yakuza game uh, looks absolutely ridiculous with you Samoa Joe. Christian. Samoa Joe is in the game. Samoa yep, Joe! he plays Raymond Law, the Raymond Law, the Pirate King. Lord. So in the Japanese version, does he 
fly planes. I'll see myself out. Yeah. You might want to do that. <laughs> oh, we don't have to. We don't have to react to every joke you do, Mike. Oh. It wasn't me. It was my Ooh. character, Flabby Whizzleteats. You don't have to react to every joke teats. you do, Flabby Weedabix. Weedabix. What? Weedabix. Yeah, Flabby Whizzleteats <laughs> said it, not me. Blame him. He's the racist. <laughs> I'm gonna get you! <laughs> if that's how they get you! Mm-hmm! Yep, they with, get um, you with I'm, the I'm lifetime blaming, limited warranty. I'm blaming warning. that joke on Carlito. Yeah, that's not, that's not cool. Let's not consider it. Uh, yeah, that was a polite... Making jokes mind. about Asian people? That's not cool. Does not consider it. You know, you know what's really considerate? Tolerance. Yeah, I, uh... I posted the screenshot of uh, Samoa Joe in the game in uh, the Facebook chat. Oh, Joe! He fat. Fat! No simpy. <laughs> yeah, that just reminds me of the video that I had shared the other day. <laughs> Beedly boop, buddy, beep, bop, beep, boop. Swing your arms. Oh, the the video of uh friggin' uh Braun Breaker uh spearing everybody. <laughs> he needs a better finisher. Yeah. The super spear. No, I mean that is literally just the T Rex from the first Joe in that game. It is. Better graphics, though. No, same Slightly graphics. better, yeah. It's probably the same sprite. Yeah. Like, that is literally where you fight that T-Rex in the first game, too. And, there was and the devil. that was the, yeah, that's the devil thing that you fight at the end of the first Joe in that game too. <laughs> yep, and it even spits out freaking uh, cavemen like uh, the T Rex did in the first game. Wait, who's that? Who's that bloke on top of the T Rex? Satan. The, the devil guy that you fight at the end of Joe and Mac. Well, time to go into the lower intestines of a dinosaur. Time to Yeah, that's literally how dinosaur. Joe and Mac ended. He was going inside a dinosaur and fighting Satan inside of it. Yep. I remember. So, Billy, what did you think of uh, Mokoko Choco Coco Corona? Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, yeah. did you just have a stroke? <laughs> <laughs> no, but if you watch their streams, you you would have a you would have a stroke, Dave. If you watch their I mean, streams, two, two two of them are graduated from the company so it's impossible but i think it's hilarious though that uh li literally like the amount of rage that several like and ptsd that members of that company have towards fuamoko now post gta collab is hilarious yeah uh well, those two <laughs> Fubuki, every time she sees Bibu. Bibu! Bibu! Now, those two are actually every sisters, time she sees right? Fuomoko. Yeah, they're at, Fuomoko are actually twins. To actual twin sisters, okay. Actual twin sisters, yep. Who stream together. Which is why they 
speak perfectly in sync with each other. Now, there's another sister group that I watch. Uh, they're from the Philippines. Um, they're called Echo Tone. They come on like really early in the mornings. But uh, I think Fuamoko might be Canadian. Yeah, I think they are too. I I know they're Asian, but they're they're Canadian. Yeah, Canadian. They're Canadian. Canadian. That's on uh, Congo's Caper Dane. Not too bad. Not too bad. It seemed like an interesting little platformer. Um, I mean, I always did jo- enjoy the Joe and Matt games. So if this is a quote unquote sequel to it, then uh, I can get it. I can get on board with it. Jason. Yeah, this is a solid little, like, you know, middle sibling, you know, in between Joe and Mac and Joe and Mac 2 and the weird Joe and Mac 2 arcade game. All right, Billy. I like it. It's fun. I play it quite a bit on my uh, Switch. Um, It's enjoyable little game, especially when I'm sitting there at work. Yep, yeah, it's a solid platformer. If you enjoy Joe and Mac, you will probably enjoy this game. Scores out of 10, Dane. Eight. Jason. Eight. Billy. Eight. Yeah, I'll give it an eight. Crazy eights. <laughs> okay. So the the newer newest Mortal Kombat game, um, you can. Oh boy! Oh no! I'm gonna I'm gonna say something. Scorpion Smoke, uh, Reptile yeah. Sub Zero. They all have the movie costumes. Um, this looks this looks pretty fucking metal. Bio metal. But then again, it's the full of music in this game. Y'all ready for this? It was only in the American version. (laughs) The original Japanese version. Wait a second. You're fucking kidding. Y'all ready for this? This is too unlimited. I I cannot believe this. I'm actually legitimately shocked. Yeah, who would have thought licensed music in an SNES game? This does not fit the narrative of something called Fire This was made by the uh, Japanese developer Athena and released worldwide by Activision. I can't and believe they got for it. some bizarre reason, Activision thought, hey, you know what would sell this game better to the rest of the world? Too Unlimited. So the entire soundtrack is just four remixed songs from 2 Unlimited from their album, Get Ready. Uh, This game did get a sequel on the Sega Saturn in 1997 called Biometal Gust. Interesting. Oh yeah. Yeah, all right. That's fine. It is the year Galaxy Century Two whoa, Three whoa. Two. This, this is this is fucking intense. Look at this. A huge war that had begun years and years before has divided the Milky Way, and all of its natural resources have been exhausted. The Milky Way Galactic Council is forced to send a fleet of starships to a nearby planet by the name of UP-457. <laughs> in search of any resources that can replenish the ones lost during the battle. During this mission, the fleet is destroyed by a race of half-machine, half-animal aliens referred to as bio by the Galactic Council. 
one of the council's supercomputers then calculates that the number of these biometals is increasing rapidly and will have the Milky Way completely taken over with thir- within 32 hours. The Hal oh, Bard's crew, young pilot Kid Ray and biologist Anita, a reference to the names of the two lead singers of Two Unlimited, oh, <laughs> along God. with their fleet, my fucking Lost, God, are assigned to eliminate the hostile threat on UP four five seven. This game is a fever dream, clearly. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. This this game looks like it kicks fucking ass. I mean, the soundtrack kicks fucking ass. Japanese soundtrack. Yeah, I kind of want to hear the Japanese soundtrack because I'm curious what the original soundtrack is. What'd you say, Mike, about ass? I said the the soundtrack kicks fucking ass. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my god, is this the Twilight? It's just the Twilight Zone! This is so fucking surreal. Uh, yeah, this is one of the strangest things I think we've ever stumbled upon. I think this is equal parts the most awesome and the most fucking weird. <laughs> you heard this song, these songs everywhere back Y'all in the ready for 90s. this? <laughs> <laughs> I think the only still hear them. I think the only thing that comes close to this is Michael Jackson's thriller, um, well, Moonwalker, rather. And in the graveyard stage, rather than play the song Thriller, it's another part of me. Uh, yeah. Like, yeah, that really, that really fuck with this, folks. I mean, the reason they couldn't do Thriller is because Michael Jackson himself didn't actually write Thriller. Oh, they didn't yeah, have the did. rights to it. Right, right. That, I remember. Although that. the song is in the code for the game. Hmm. There are people that have modded the game and it actually does have thriller in that section now. Yeah. Like you can you can actually play it with that in there. Oh yeah, Rod I, I forgot Rod Temperton wrote thriller. That's Michael Jackson. I don't. Yep. Probably don't need hit anywhere on. <laughs> I will listen to the 16-bit version of Smooth Criminal. It's 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 still it's good. I mean, nothing beats um, playing Michael Jackson's Moonwalker, and in the level where dogs are attacking you, you do the dance special move, and the fucking dogs start dancing on you. Yeah, it's true. It, it, it is flipping awesome. <laughs> look at those! Look at those dogs dance! Yeah. Uh oh! Uh oh! We're going into the spooky graveyard. It's gonna be scary. You that game. Not of me. That wow. game, back in the early '90s, like '92, '91, was the whole reason why I wanted to get a Sega Genesis back then. Just for that game. Well, for me, it was mutantly cocky was my, uh, well, that and Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Those are the two games I, that want to get a stake. Dane, I recently got an enamel pin, uh, and it's a, a mutant league football enamel pin. Interesting. Yeah. Come on, we'll, 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 let's get Mutant League Tennis. Let's make that a thing. Come on. I would play that. Mutant League Tennis, Mutant League Basketball. Mutant League Lacrosse. <laughs> let's talk about it. Mutant League Wrestling. I that's, play it. That's called AEW. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> You know, suddenly it seems like the cool thing to do to make fun of AEW now. No. I'm doing it, obviously. It's not cool. <laughs> you. 
But people just thought it was going to be the saving grace of professional wrestling, and it turned out it was no better than Vince McMahon's era of WWE. Vince McMahon, you were bad, too. And right now, WWE, because since Vince has left and Paul Levesque is running everything, basically, and The Rock, it, the product has gotten way better. Yeah. Oh. Tony Khan, you a Tony Khan, you a bathtub full of cocaine. That's <laughs> fucked up. But true. And I think too much. Because Bolivac is listening to the fans, you know, and if you cater to the fans, you gotta make money. I love how you're calling him by his property. It's Triple H. Okay? And that's what he goes by. He goes by Paul Triple H Levesque. It's Triple. Yeah, yeah well, when, when, he, when he's credited on screen at the end of at the end of uh, Raw and SmackDown, he is credited as Paul Levesque. Yeah. Eh. Now that the, they started doing an executive producer credit at the end of shows. At the at the end of uh, NXT, it says Paul Levesque and uh, Shawn Michaels. Yeah, and leave fitting. Now, Shawn Michaels doesn't go by his actual last name because then it wouldn't fit on the screen. What are you talking about? Michael Hick and Bottom would indeed fit on the screen. It just would look silly. Michael, Michael Hick and Bottom. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They were like, "Who's Michael Hick and Bottom?" It's Shawn Michaels. Whoa. Also, I think legally his name is now Shawn Michaels. <laughs> Probably. No, I, no. So who would want to be Michael like, Hickenbottom anyway? And, uh, sounds like uh, I sounds like I grew up in Alabama kissing my cousin. Oh, he's from Texas. That's fair. Uh. And whether people want to remember this or not, Shawn Michaels is a hick. And a bottom, so it makes sense. <laughs> Therefore, he's Michael a hick. hick and bottom. <laughs> hey, man, listen here. I was always, my daddy always taught me, if your cousin's super hot, you can kiss him on the lips. My cousin's cute. I think she's sexy. I grab her hips. And I'm on cloud nine. She's just a sexy cuz. Sexy cuz. Sexy cuz. <laughs> She's got some peach fur. Peach fur. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think Cletus the slack jaw the oak has to go home. Jesus fucking Christ. Oh, my lord. Oh. Wow, I, I thought that... Uh... I thought that both Shawn Michaels and Triple H were older than what they were. They're not. They're only, what, 50-something? I think uh, Triple Shawn H is Shawn Michaels 47. is 59 and Triple H is 55. Oh, there you go. And and Shawn Michaels is 59. Uh, yeah, he's going to be. Yeah, he's, he's younger he's... than my dad. You're younger than my dad. My dad just turned 60. Yeah, Bret Hart is 67. Are oh, you still almost 70? Well, hold on. That makes sense because in the late 90s, he in, if you watch that, you know, that documentary that he did, Wrestling with Shadows. Yeah. Goldberg's kicked said, him, when Goldberg kicked him in the head and aged him prematurely 15 years. It, he, uh, he says, I'm turning 40. <laughs> so it made sense. So back in 97, 90, he turned hey. 40. Hey. Hey, it's me, Bret Hart. Did I mention how Goldberg destroyed my career? That, that, no, that he never. Shit. You're not Bret Hart. Bret Hart calls him Bill Goldberg. Every single time. Without fail. Never just says Goldberg. It's always Bill Goldberg. I, Remember when Bill Goldberg kicked me in the head? Bill Goldberg rigged my career. And Bill Goldberg did this. And Bill Goldberg did that. Bill well, you know, Goldberg, that's a, Bill so Goldberg, that, Bill Goldberg, fart on Vince Russo's lips. Well, you know, you know what, Brett? That's what you get for not putting your hands up for the kick. What was that? Too. What was that last one, Brett? Uh, Bill Goldberg, that. Oh. Okay. 
I thought you said something about uh, Vince Russo farting on your lips. Huh? No, no, Vince Russo never did that. Bo Goldberg would have no. killed him. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, specifically farting on Bret Hart's lips. No, no, my lips were not involved. It's all Bill Goldberg. <laughs> Bill Goldberg's on your lips. Bill Goldberg's on your lips. And if you get lucky, you'll get concussed. Fun. Fun stuff. This is from such a fever dream from what I heard, freaking two unlimited music. From what I heard, if Brett wouldn't have, you know, like wrestled the next day after getting the concussion, he probably would have extended his career a bit longer. He would have took a break. I mean, and uh, I think they made him wrestle. It's not like he had a choice. If he would have got, well, I got knocked loopy. Let me go check myself. No, you're good. Like, you're sure. wreck myself. Yeah. You can't you're just solely... a little loopy. You're still good. You're still good. You know, also, you know, demolition, you know, demolition, they suing WWE because of concussions and stuff like that. It's like, hold on. When did you ever take a bump in WWE? <laughs> I mean, think about it. When did they ever take a bump in the ring? I mean, they were always giving the bumps. They were never taking them. Meanwhile, I think, uh, you know, to file this under wrestlers saying stupid things. I lost a tiny bit of respect for Stone Cold. Tiny bit. When he said that you could just tell yourself not to get CTE from a concussion. That's kind of not how it works. That's kind of not yeah. how it works. Yeah. I lost a tiny bit of respect when he said he didn't believe in CTE. Never mind the fact that he beat his wife. That too. <laughs> you know, I mean, he is the more respectable wrestler out of Texas, though. It's only because oh, Carrie. It's only because. They say it's only because Carrie Von Erich's dead. Oh. He killed himself. <laughs> you know, I mean. uh... I, I liked Undertaker until he started talking. <laughs> hey, well, you, you've never been a bicycle, so you don't know. I mean, think <laughs> about it. Uh, a lot of people are shocked at, you know, Undertaker's views. It's like, he's from Texas. What did you yeah. expect? What did you expect? The man is from Texas. He, I mean, he loves fucking his girl while on a motorcycle, firing a rifle into the air while balls deep in a squealing hog. He's from Texas. I don't know why everybody was so shocked. They were like, oh, he's going to be. It's like, why is he talking this way? It's like he's from Texas. That's why. Meanwhile, Stone Cold doesn't talk like that at all. No, because he's drunk half the time. What's a liberal? <laughs> I don't no. think uh, I, I just don't think Stone Cold cares about politics at all. I just don't think he gives a oh, crap. He cares so. about three things, and two of them are beer. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, this here is my barn, cat. Oh, uh, we're just chilling here at my barn. Oh, you're, you're Stone Cold. Over the camera, cat. You're, uh, you're Stone Cold. Sound yeah. like he's being played by Hank Hill. All he cares about is beer, uh, riding his four wheel around, hunting, and living on his ranch. That's all he cares about. Stone Seriously, Cold, doing Sto Stone Cold it, Hank Hill. I got my propane. What? What? <laughs> I mean, hang it, hang it, Dale. Do I have to Stone Cold stun you? Do he I have? Invested his dang it, Dale. Do I have to stomp a mud hole in your ass? <laughs> Pocket sand. What you got? Hank, I really like the way you kick Vince McMahon's in the anus. <laughs> <laughs> that pervert had it coming. <laughs> pocket sand. He had a pocket <laughs> vagina. Pocket oh, dang old man, man, dang old man, Vince McMahon, dang old shit on everybody, man, dang old man, literally shit, dang old man. I don't know, I'm Billy Gunn, man. Do this on these on them. I don't know why I'm picturing, I'm picturing Bill Toad Treve as Mick Foley. 
Hank, I'm gonna throw treat. myself off the hell of the cell, Hank. Hank, don't, don't, don't throw me off the cell. Don't throw me off the cell again, Hank. Hank, <laughs> Hank. Damn it, Bill. Hey, I, Hank, have a nice day. Damn it, Bill, I told you not to eat my wife's cookies. Well, I can't have it. That cookies are delicious, Hank. Bill, I'm gonna have to <laughs> stomp a mud hole in your ass and walk it dry. You know, Bill, by my wife's cookies, I made her a vagina, Bill. <laughs> oh. Okay, Hank. Oh, I, didn't, okay. I, I was, thought you got actual cookies, Yeah, Hank. no, I was eating her actual cookies. She's giving up the puss. <laughs> oh! If I had known that, Hank, I would have been balls deep in a squealing dog myself. Uh, uh, you know, not all salad is lettuce. There's potato salad, there's chicken salad. <laughs> that episode. Bobby is Kurt Angle. It's damn true, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Dad. I won the Olympics with a broken freaking neck, Dad. I want to fuck Booker T's wife, Dad. I want to have nasty bestiality. Nasty bestiality sex, Dad. <laughs> I want Percocet. That's my gold medal. I don't know you. <laughs> I guess that would. I guess that. Would, I guess that would make Connie like Trish Stratus or something like that. Gal Kim. Mm. Oh yeah. If you want to be racist, sure. <laughs> oh, she's Asian, so it makes sense. Yeah, typecast them. Yeah, that that'll that'll really set you well. <laughs> Yeah. It's typecast all the Asians. <laughs> it's how you Isn't do that it. Right? Yeah. Isn't that right, bloaty Blenick? <laughs> oh, Jesus. Well, at least, Gal, uh, you know, Gal Kim's cool. I mean, I mean, yes, but, you know, think outside the fucking box, you <laughs> Jode. What's more racist, her playing Gal Kim or her putting on the yellow wig and then playing a white woman? Her putting on the yellow wig, they're both kind of racist in a way, but one's being, one's typecast, the other's white face. So really, you can't get away with either one. I know. What's the so fucking just go point? With the one that's, so just go with the one that's less offensive. The, le, the, 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 the lesson here is just don't be a chode. Uh, thoughts just don't on, do it. Thoughts on Biometal, Dane? This game kicked ass. The music was pretty bopping too. Yeah. I'm still in shock that it was too unlimited. But it's like you know this this actually, in the words of Carl, from uh, Aqua Team, this game kicks ass. I don't give a damn who says it. <laughs> Jason. Yeah, I almost I almost want to see the original Japanese game just to hear the difference in music. Because, like, this only has four different songs. Like, the original Japanese one must have a whole damn soundtrack by comparison. Billy. I like this game, and Biometal should be a grindcore game. I mean, band. It's name. It really should. Also, in the other words of Carl, why are you exercising? You're just going to die someday anyways. Ew, man. Oh, this man. Anyway, this game is 100% but fuck insane, and it's amazing. Uh, scores out of 10, Dane. Dane. Jason. Nine. Billy. Dane. I think I'm willing to give it a 10. So I will. <laughs> One day, did. And I did. And then there ain't, there ain't shit you can do about it, so don't don't bother. All right, one more game. Uh. <laughs> 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 what? 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 Why you make a fun? What I do? Title. 
side. Oh. oh. International tennis poopy. Uh, oh. Uh, diarrhea. Diarrhea card initiated, Jason. Di diarrhea. Billy. Diarrhea, cha cha cha. We are shitting this game out. Simple as that. Okay. I'm down, mofo. Flibbity flabbity doo. Konami! Once again. Kodami. Konami. Bon appetit. Ah. Bon appetit. Oh, Twinby! And Winby. Winby and Winby. Everyone knows it's been. Twinby, Winby, and Poopy. Excuse you, me? You made half of that up. A little bit. Yeah. There is definitely no Twinby character called Booby. I said poopy. No, there's not a poopy either. Well, poopy's what hey, you. Booby. Poopy is what you did for breakfast. That was after breakfast. Do um, I? I imagine you. You do breakfast backwards. You, you shit first and then you eat. <laughs> uh. What the hell was that? That was booby. Okay. I thought there was a side scrolling Twin B game. Uh, well, that's because Twin B that's is playable and parodious. Oh, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I was thinking of Fantasy stuff. Fantasy Zone is Opa Opa, not Twin B. Mm. Yeah, they look very similar. Because uh, they are both uh, cute em ups. You know. Both really good, though. Both really good. These. These sentient pineapples are just minding their own business, and you're killing them? Pineapples! Well, maybe they shouldn't uh, be... Well, maybe they shouldn't be duds. Oh, no, it's our disgusting neighbor, right up. Crikey, hello. <laughs> Take care, So, uh... Well, one of the interesting things is that Twinbee actually has like a series of uh, audio dramas in Japan. Really? Really? Yeah. I did not know that. I think that they should translate them into English. Here we go again. Here we go, go, go. There's, there's a lot of interesting like media that Konami could possibly bring to the United States, but probably wouldn't because, like, you know, translation costs money. I'm talking like and, a fan thing, getting the script. and Yeah, I mean, like, it would be cool to see fans do stuff with it. Hell, I wouldn't mind seeing uh, somebody regain the rights and re-releasing the uh, Goemon anime. Before we go on, I just want to point out Mike pulling out a stack of bow reference. <laughs> Here we go again. Here we go, go, go. Here we go.
Don't forget the flying eggplants. They're over jeans. Tensions were high with this Herman Munster guy. You could have called this game bird versus camel. No one would have argued with you. What the, what the fuck are you talking about? It's the, uh, the JonTron song Titanic produced by Shmoyoho. Oh, gotcha. Whose whose chorus is oddly not about Titanic? It's about the fucking Star Wars Atari game. <laughs> okay. Because it looks like a bird and a camel. Okay. And, he, and he's not wrong, by the way. He you could have called that game "Bird versus Camel," and I don't think it would have been an arguable point. Something oddly relaxing about playing Poppin' Twin B. It's so colorful and happy. It is. It is the opposite of my life. <laughs> oh, for, oh, for God's sake. Everybody knows I'm emo. <laughs> Excuse me while I go listen to My Chemical Romance and slit my wrists. <laughs> I, so, uh, I wish my lawn was emo so it would cut itself. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I wish my lawn was emo so it would cut itself. Correct. <laughs> uh, that sounds like something Emily would say. Probably. She she has said that joke before. Well, what do you expect? She's 10. She's 13. 13. What do you expect? She's 12. <laughs> <laughs> what do you expect? Tiny Lister's dead. Oh, well, yeah, he is now. I mean... Yeah, but, but, uh, but Zeus is alive. No, he yes, he is. He lives on in all of our hearts. <laughs> As heart murmurs. Oh, shut up. That's what he died of. He died. I don't know what he died of. And I was going to say, you don't, you don't shit about fuck, my man. <laughs> Okay, Robin Williams. He got a kiss from a woman. Yay. The end. Oh, Pepsi Man. <laughs> Pepsi Man. Which that <laughs> game is. <laughs> has no right to be that good. Just putting that out there. Hey, it's allowed to be as good as it wants to be. Who are you to judge? I'm just saying, it's shocking that that game is that good. Oh, well, like what, what Pepsi would make a bad game? Possibly. It possibly, yeah. I mean, for it being a product tie-in game. Pepsi's never made a bad game. I mean, they've only made the one, never. but they have an uh, they have a perfect track record. Never, never, ever, ever, never, ever, forever. I can't wait for Pepsi Man Two. Electric Pepsi. Electric Lou. Boogaloo. No, Alexa. Electric Pepsi Lou. Alexa Bliss Lou. <laughs> Pepsi Two, uh, Pepsi Man Two, where it's it's Wild Cherry Pepsi instead of regular Pepsi. And the final Why boss. The fuck you and, and the no, not the band Wild Cherry, just the flavor. And then, and then the final boss of the game is CM Punk. I work with children. 
and you gotta smack him in the face to get him to shut the fuck up. Oh. So, and it turns out Pepsi Man is actually Drew McIntyre in a skin tight latex suit. And, and this you might know, be you this, this is this, this might be ver, this might be verging into fever dream. I'm not sure. <laughs> you guys, you guys can finish this episode. Oh, oh yeah, you never leave when I make bad jokes. Only when Ashley does. I, I see how it is. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Some shut friend you are. <laughs> Mike, shut the fuck up. Okay, fine. I won't talk the rest of this episode. Okay. So. uh... Interesting. Uh, it's been coming out about uh, Vince McMahon hating NXT. I mean, that was never a state secret, anyway. Yeah. What did Vince hate the most when it came to Triple H? He hated something new that people liked that wasn't his idea. Triple H came up with NXT. And you notice that NXT stars would never be pushed? Now, what do you see? What did you see tonight on Monday Night Raw? You're seeing Being NXT pushed. stars all over the place. Yeah, that's Triple H. That's his baby. His best friend, Shawn Michaels, runs NXT. Vince mm -hmm. hated that. He didn't want to give anybody credit, much less his son-in-law, so people would possibly think that Triple H is smarter than him. But he is. Yeah, nah. Coachman speaking uh, hard truth right there about uh, Vince McMahon. You got anything to add, Mike? Well, I'm Mike Riley, and Dave Ford George, my best friend. Oh, thanks, Mike. That's so nice of you. Uh, you're my best friend, too. Oh, isn't that nice? Aww. You see, you see, folks, you thought I was going to make Mike say something stupid, but no. See, see, that's how nice a person I am. I made, I made Mike say something very nice. But see, yeah, Mike he's not me. Right he's not me who would go, I'm Mike Riley, and I poop on duck spaces. <laughs> well, see, Mike's not saying anything, so... That I guess that makes it true. Uh, all right, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I guess Mike farts on the pieces. I love you. You can hear him laughing in the background. Trying to trying to hold it back. Try to, oh, there's the there's the look out, ducks! He's gonna fart on you. <laughs> oh no! This is terrible. Oh, there's farting everywhere. Come here, come here, duck. <laughs> all right, all right, I get it. <laughs> fucking, <laughs> fucking assholes. <laughs> no, excuse me. I, I said nothing but nice things. I know, <laughs> I, but you also told me to shut up, so you're still kind of an asshole. <laughs> Well, that's because I'm from the Come here, ducky. Uh, I actually thought about staying silent the whole episode and then just pausing, like, right near the end. And then just expecting you guys to know to give your final thoughts on the game. <laughs> and then score the game. And then I was just going to end the episode without any fanfare. <laughs> you know, I gotta be honest with you, I was actually leaning towards doing that, but then you said... You no. made me laugh, fucker. I can't help it. <laughs> no. we, we, we do do it that, was, you yeah. know? It was funny. Thoughts on Pop and Twin B, Dane? It was pretty good. I was like... It seems to me that a lot of these schmuck... Wait, did that say shit? <laughs> oh my god. Uh, it says shit copyright symbol. <laughs> that's, the name oh. I, that's the name I entered. <laughs> So it's oh. shit, twin B, shit, win B. <laughs> I have to be honest with you. I thought that was the I thought that was the game putting it down. I was like, what the what the fuck, twin B? No. Anyway, up, <laughs> um, I always enjoy these shmup games, and this one is no exception. It was it was lovely, dear. Jason, 
yet another bygone franchise that Konami has paid no love to because they don't make games anymore. What the fuck, Konami? What the fuck? fuck make a goddamn fuck game. Konami, fuck Konami. Stop making pachinko machines. Billy, your, your thoughts, please. I always love Twin B games, especially Pop and Twin B. They're just, they're just fun and good and wholesome. <laughs> Why were you slowly powering down? I love Pop and Twin B. <laughs> or either you were slowing, either you were powering down or turning into David Bowie. I'm not sure which. Just you shut your mouth. Mm. Yeah, this is actually a really fun, uh, relaxing, strangely enough, shmup. Uh, it is very relaxing to play. It's not difficult. It's really easy to get into. And it's extremely easy on the eyes because it's very colorful. This is a solid shmup all around. Scores out of 10, Dane. Dane. Jason. 10. Billy. Ten. Yeah, I'm down to give this a 10 as well. On this edition of the show, we played Congo's Caper, Biometal, and Poppin' Twin B. Best game of the episode, Dane. Um, this one's going to be tough. <laughs> this is going to be tough. I think I had to give the edge to Biometal just because of two of them. Yeah, this is yeah, this legitimately is tough. No joke. Uh, Jason. Uh, Twin B. Billy. Oh my god, uh, uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to go with the monkey game. You're going with Congo's Caper? <laughs> Alright. I really, I like that game, okay? Alright, that means I gotta be the tiebreaker here, and I'm picking Biometal. Biometal wins. Thanks for joining us on this edition of Retro Roulette. If you like what we do, please hit subscribe, and be sure to hit the bell bada 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 bada